Welcome to Half Hour Rap Song. I'm Brendan Long, a Grammy-nominated hip-hop producer and television composer. And I moonlight as an EDM DJ. And I'm James Kirkland. I'm an improv comedian, a Super Bowl commercial actor, and a basketball mystery novelist. Together we meet weekly for a conversation about random things. Following this conversation, we will have 30 minutes to create, record, and perform a brand new rap song about the things that we just talked about. You're listening to Half Hour Rap Song. Half Hour Rap Song, we're back. We're back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Half Hour Rap Song. Probably the most critical Half Hour Rap Song to date, Brendan. I think this is fair to say that it all it all, it all really kind of rides on this. this. Yeah, this yeah. is the one we need. We need a hit. A hit. We need a hit. A hit song. A hit record. Right. We need a crossover. A crossover. Okay. Crossover to hit land. We didn't make this hit hit city USA, okay? So we gotta figure out what makes a popular song. What how do you make what what is the formula for the perfect popular song? You tell me. You're me? the music guy. Yeah. Oh the music guy. Perfect popular song. Yeah. It needs to be about it. It streams. It needs to it needs to resonate with people. Resonation. That's good. It needs to resonate it needs to be something new or novel new novel um the newest novel but not too new it also needs to feel familiar like, yes like, like you've you always thought you've heard it when you heard it for the first time you're like have i heard this before no it's brand new but it seems like it's old that's the thing yeah you just gotta steal something steal from the best steal from the best you know there's like so you need a little bit of beatles a little bit of run dmc a little bit of Wu Tang, a little bit of Elvis, a little bit of Frank Sinatra, a little bit of Moses Malone, Master P, Master P. Mm-hmm. Well, there's only so many notes. Like the crazy thing is, yeah. there's just if you look at a piano and it looks how many like, like ten? Uh, how I many should, notes? Are, I, eighty-eight? Is it? I, I should know how many. <laughs> I think there's eighty-eight notes. Yeah, eighty-eight notes. There's eighty-eight notes on a yeah. piano. Yeah, that's it. And they came up with that with that number because. In 1988, when they invented the piano, wow, um, they were like, "Let's just do it after the year." Doc Brown, 88 notes, but there's actually only uh, one, one point twenty one, four gigawatt. Five. Well, if you just count, if you just uh, go A B C D E F G, G, that's it. Why no H? Why did they stop there? There was no need for H. But you said there was only so many notes that you were complaining about how we need a new, new note. We want new well, notes. there are other notes. What, well, let's have some. Oh, so we want new notes in our hit song. New notes. We hit new notes. Never. There are other different scales. This is uh, justice. Scales of justice. No, there are other different scales in other cultures and other in other areas of the world. Fish they scale. don't understand music, but the way that we understand Western music is just mm. uh, only those notes. Like Tibetan throat singing, they have different notes there. I think so. Have you ever heard that? Yes. Like, ay, 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 ay. it's so good. It's pretty crazy, huh? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they how you would n- notate like that kind of throat singing. But my point yeah, is, you think it's basically all the same melodies and songs like forever. It's just so in order to get a hit song, you got to steal like a good one. Like right. I'd, so it's got to go like G C G F G C. Gee, that's that's what that's all I can play on the guitar. So that's those oh, a lot yeah, of songs. You know some, a lot of songs on guitar go like that. That'll kind of do it. But I can't do F, so that's where it stops for me. You can't do F. That's it's like the ultimate roadblock. I can do like a modified like crap F. You yeah, know? F is hard, right? I can't remember. F is so hard. Mm-hmm. It's like they made music. Uh, it's so it, music is great because you see you can kind of get into it early, mm-hmm. but then it takes forever to master. Like you, you can't really ever master it. So we got to take some Mozart. We gotta take some classics as well. Classical music, at. yeah. Beethoven. Okay, these guys stood the test of time. We need that kind of hit. We need like a Beethoven hit. They they have stood the test of time, huh? It, classical music is interesting, right? I grew up. Mm-hmm. My mom's a classical piano teacher, and mm-hmm. so there was classical music Shout playing, out. playing all the time. Shout out my mom. And um, but classical music, like, it, people kind of think of it as the best music, mm-hmm. but like that's just racism, pretty much. Yeah, which is sadly everywhere, and we di- we discourage it and don't condone it at all, because there's like Wu Tang Clan's also classical has piano. 
Well, like, you know, classical music is just the, uh, like, it's just based on what they thought was the best music in that part of Europe in, like, a long time ago. Austria. Austria, right. Yep. I don't, you that know. It was just the, that was just, like, what was hits, like, there. Like, it was just, that was that town. Yeah, Mozart was there. That was, was the there. scene of that town. Mozart that town was scene was just really, 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 really lit. Yeah, Beethoven was there. Sometimes they would, like, perform together. Yeah. They'd get down. Mm-hmm. Face to face, piano, like Elton and Billy. They had kind of a thing, like a Kanye Drake kind of thing, like yeah. Beethoven and Mozart. Rivalry. Trashed each other a little bit. Yeah. There was shit talking for sure. Yeah. Flexing, different. Yeah. I mean, these guys, I mean, they were just dropped, but they did have, I mean, hit up, they did inspire each other, like the Beach Boys and the Beatles. You Be- know? Beethoven was deaf, right? That He's the one that was deaf. Most, yeah, exactly. So he composed, D-E-F. and he, he composed all his songs just by, uh, like he, what would he put his ear on the floor and hear the vibrations and yeah, f- come, <laughs> coming from the wood in the floor. <laughs> yeah. That's how he composed. That dude was a G. That is yeah. crazy. I've ear tried to composing floor. like that. Yeah. How does it go? Oh, just, you just do it for bass. You just hear bass and you're like, damn, it's, it's hitting. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Beethoven. He must have woofers. Yeah. Yeah. He was just like, this is a slapper. Just a system. This is a slapper. I imagine that's the kind of pianos they were playing back then. They would just have crazy huge pianos. Mm-hmm. Maybe there was just huger pianos back then. No, I, I don't know. Yeah. They the same pianos? I guess so. The same kind. Damn. Yeah. No, they didn't <laughs> they have pianos. They had harpsichords. That's what I thought. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, harpsichords. Those slap, must slap way harder. They slap way harder than a piano. <laughs> Come on. Because it's just like you're slapping on the harp. Yeah. The strings are just like harpsichords. Doo, 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 doo. Harpsichords got some bass when you go low. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I grew up on in, in classical piano. In the trunk. Piano, and I grew up in Atlanta. So like the other kind of music that I first introduced to was just like you know b- booty bass music, Atlanta. Yeah. So so death bass all stars, and we were obsessed with that because we were obsessed with Alpine subwoofers that oh, yeah. you would buy and put. In the trunk of your Honda Civic, mm-hmm. and basically not touch basically the, not touch the rest of the system, just factory no. tweeters, everything else, just yeah. the largest subwoofer you could find in the trunk. Yeah, yeah, and man, <laughs> it, my uh, my friend Jordan in high school, he wrote a poem for the literary magazine, and it was about it was called like Alpine Ascent, and it was mm. about his Alpine subwoofer. Mm. He just got so into bass that he was just listening to like pink noise in his car. And yeah. Just... No, I, I definitely was wrote, wrote in some cars that had some, you know, the woofers that go up the whole trunk and it would just rattle your fillings, as they said. <laughs> like, it would just feel like your whole teeth were just like vibrating out of your skull. Yeah. It is like a spiritual experience. That was great. Is that still a thing? I hope so. I hope they're still doing that. Do they still, can you still buy like a. Like in high school, like when you're in high school, you get you get rims, mm-hmm. and you would want to get a big ass subwoofer. Yeah, that's yeah, it. That's it. I don't know if they do it because I, I, I think they still do. I mean, I still hear cars, you know, rattling around. I I would try to rattle mine. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it would be just like factory. But if you had like a good factory system, you could rattle them a bit. Yeah. I don't know. But then do it's like really, it's, it's playing with fire because you blow out your system speaker so easy. Isn't it crazy that speakers are just designed where you can just blow them out? No, it's very, yeah, it's easy. My speakers are died. I blew, I blew them out. Well, Sawyer, yeah. Sawyer blew them out. He like. That we haven't figured that out yet. They can't make unblow outable speakers. It's just like, it's up to you. The song sometimes will just slap so hard it'll break. Yeah. Be careful. Have you ever seen them catch on fire? No. <laughs> yes, like studio monitors catch on fire. That's what we want to do with this song. They caught on this fire. This is what we want yeah, yeah, yeah. for on fire. our hit song today. We want the speakers on fire. So it, you know it's a hit song if the speakers catch on fire. Yeah. Then you're then you're solid. Confirmed. Um, hit song confirmed. Top of the charts. But you were talking about the most interesting thing you learned this week. Oh, we were getting to that, weren't you? Thank you for that transition yeah it was the most interesting thing i learned this week well i'm reading an interesting book by reading i mean listening to it on tape yeah uh, i hope nobody reads it anymore yeah at 1.35 speed uh it's called far journeys by robert monroe have, mm-hmm. you, have you heard of this no it's a book it's a guy who goes astral projecting he's an astral traveler you can just do it really easily it says it's nonfiction. he just pops one day he's just like pops his third eye he's like 
and like jumps out of his body and kind mm-hmm. of flies around the astral realm. And he kind of encounters some souls and he's kind of figuring some stuff out. And then it goes into, um, it, it's, it's, I mean, it, he goes into the concept of louche. I think he invents the term louche. You know what louche is? No. Louche is like, where basically he's, he's got, like, he, he's trying to explain, a soul is trying to explain to another soul what the purpose of earth is. What, what is this life on earth? Like, what are these, you know, humans doing down here? And all these souls are trying to get into this uh, realm because it's a chance to evolve really quickly. Because it's you know. hold on, what's Lush? Lush is the theory that that happens. Okay, Lush is the energy that, that that was theorized is being harvested from Earth. The Earth ultimately is like a, a garden planet, mm. and we're like cattle basically to advanced alien kind of hyperdimensional life forms that are using um, our bad vibes. This is like similar to. Oh right, like our, our our chaos energy, yeah, yeah, kind of thing. But yeah, it's not it's not like reptilians because like reptilians, it's the loosh still has to be um, loosh. Distilled. How do you spell it? Loosh, like L O O S H. You have to mm-hmm. distill the bad vibes. Yeah, to make it into the fuel for whatever these advanced or food for whatever these advanced beings are. Yeah, and they're so they're just trying. This whole whole realm is just trying to everybody to get you know have a bad time basically. And they feed out these negative energies of emotions, and it's all like an emotional, um, yeah. Factor. Dude, that realm must be having a fucking buffet yeah. these days. They are lapping it up. It's a bu- it's a buffer harvest. It's so he traveled there in his mind or whatever astral, yeah, projecting. Mm-hmm. And he, it's kind of like what no, soul is based off of a, a little bit. Like I think this is what the the guy the Pixar read it and then wrote the movie Soul. I, I, I didn't see that movie. It's like there's different. Yeah, it's similar in that you kind of like these clusters of energy and just like these souls. Clusters of energy. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. It, I thought that was about a cat. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, all right. So Lu, so the book was about this guy, and he went to the bad vibe zone, mm-hmm. and he met some people there. And they were like, this is a bad vibe zone. What we do, we distill the bad vibes into into like a bad vibes kombucha. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we live off that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's the entire. And it was, you know, it, start, it started. That, that's the whole like purpose of evolution and why life on Earth has changed a lot. It's because they've been trying different kind of ways of no, farming. It just sounds like the Matrix again. It's basically the Matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. astral travel it's anywhere. It's you Matrix. put in a DVD of the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> you astral traveled to your couch to watch the Matrix. That's as far as you got. Wow, that's really amazing. It's yeah. Back to that incredible is is everything a simulation theory that is a you know just yeah it does end. kind of definitely kind of goes into simul- simulacra. But what did you learn? What did you learn? You learned that it's called Looch. That is interesting. I learned I had heard about Looch before, but I learned this is where it came from. The bad vibes dimension. The, the, yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. You could just Earth. you could just power shit off of that like how do you think that works i mean i can't it's kind of similar also to monsters inc so i think that this is, has been read by pixar people before because you know it's like that the monsters world is fueled by um bad bad dreams of children or like fear of children that's why the monsters exist to pop out of closets and like collect that's like similar right that's what they get that's yeah. what they run on that's their yeah that's their like gas and that's their okay yeah and at the time you watch monsters inc you're like oh what a great metaphor for fossil fuels it was a metaphor which for fossil de- fuels, which we have debunked, um, kind of, at the time. But now, reading this uh, Robin Room, I'm like, oh no, it's, it's actually just um, an accurate description of, <laughs> of potential. What this guy's theory is. Wow, you just ripped your headphones off like you were so sick of me talking about what we were talking about. No, I just realized I just uh, that I don't need to be wearing headphones. Okay, power move. Yeah, no, move. I'm totally, I'm riveted in what you're talking about. You look like Jose Mourinho in the meme where he's like taking the headphones off. It's like, oh, God, I can't, <laughs> can't stand listening this to this completely anymore. completely not oh, an incredulous. God. It was actually like, I didn't, I forgot that you had them on. Oh. And okay. I was like, oh. Yeah, fine. I'll do it too. I'll you do know it. What? I don't want to hear let's this. Take the he- let's, I don't want to hear this at all. Let's take the headphones off. Let's take them off. Gloves off, headphones Half off. Half hour apps okay, on. Okay. No. And the headphones Let's start are recording. Off. Let's start recording. Mm-hmm. Let's begin again. From the top. Astral projecting to the bad vibes, bad vibes dimension. Yeah. And you learned that. Bad vibes kombucha. They're making. <laughs> and just, they power their vehicles off that. Right. They power their vehicles. Well, we don't know if they need vehicles per se, if they're just like high level entities on some, you know, 
unimaginable plane of existence. But no, because they still they still require like fossil fuel. It just happens to be bad vibes. It's us, of except dinosaur we're the fo- we're the fossil fuels now. We are we are, um, yeah. Our, our bad, bad energy. Yeah, our bad energy. Yeah, is what's getting them going in the morning. And yeah, maybe you know prices are up, and that's for them. Like our gas is up, so but probably maybe their gas is up, and that's why they have to kind of squeeze us a little harder. No, prices are not up. Like there's been so many bad vibes. Like there, mm-hmm. if anything, there's a bad vibes glut, and they've got to be like super cheap. Like right, bad guys. Inf- Seventy eight cents a gallon. Bad vibes. <laughs> like cheap. Like Clinton years. Bad vibes. Like they got so much bad vibes these days. Yeah. They were like, oh, we'll do it. We got this thing, the pandemic. This is bad vibes for days. We're all going to drive our freaking F-150s without a care in the world. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, dude, you overdid it. We didn't need that many bad vibes. <laughs> yeah, now we're flooded. The fl- market's flooded with them. Sale, bad vibes. We've got to go. Now we've got to hoard the bad vibes. Yeah, it's sale. Yeah. All the bad vibes must go. All bad vibes must go. That's how, that's how economics works. And obviously their system. Supply and demand. Must be exactly like ours. Yeah. I mean, that's universal. That is the law of the universe, supply and demand. Cause and effect. That's why... Action, reaction. Like the um, planets move around the stars. Mm-hmm. Just, it's a... Uh, so yeah, supply and demand. If there's too much sun... Yeah, it's too hot. It's too hot. <laughs> 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 Gotta pull back. <laughs> yeah, no water. Yeah. I can't wait till I get I get asked about those kind of questions from a Sawyer. I'm already just like tripping up trying to explain basic stuff to him um, about death. We've talked about a lot. Yeah. A lot, a lot What's about he asking it. about now? Um, oh, geez, what was it? I was just thinking about it, trying to explain supply and demand to him or something. I'm like, why? But why? Are you why? Jumping yeah, into yeah, why? Well, capitalism and yeah, I guess so. I mean, yeah, we just established that that's a basic. I mean, it's energy you need to transfer to other people to get energy back. It's like, that's, you know, but kids, you kind of get that, right? That's pretty much, I'm just going to say that it's like a science thing. Yeah. Yeah. Throw yeah. it in the science, throw it, <laughs> throw it in the science bucket down yeah. the way. Yeah, throw it in the science bucket. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you don't want to give them bad information. No. You, know. you got to start putting them to work. Start putting the kids to work? Yeah. Yeah. What would, what would you have your kids do like a michael jackson kind of deal yeah they need to start making hit songs you need like five kids for that we need to start making hits man yeah we need hits five kids will give us hits joe jackson monster that he may be yeah was a genius visionary that's true you know some monsters are visionaries some visionaries are monsters so you're saying i should have more kids and then make yes. them write a hit song. You yeah. think they wrote those songs? Kids don't write the yes, hit songs. Yes, of course they did. They're geniuses. He put them in the room. He was like, write. They're not geniuses. Kids are not geniuses. They don't, they don't come up with very much. They just kind of like, they're just on, a, they're on another level. Like they're very emotionally intelligent. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that they could write a hit song very easily. Well, that's why you have to make them afraid for their lives. Oh. Oh. <laughs> And then they will start, you know, mm. <laughs> humans are very, you know, we've pushed us. Not suggesting that. Not not parental advice. What was the bad vibes thing called again? Spoosh? Loosh. Loosh? Yeah. That's the, the most interesting thing you learned this week was loosh. Well, I learned that it, where it, I finally heard where it came from. Yeah. That was the interesting Did thing. Did you finish this guy's whole book? I got like about an hour left. What happens at the end? Oh, I haven't got to the end yet. Oh. We just said I had an hour left. Oh. Of the book. How long is the book? I think it was like eight hours. Oh. That's pretty interesting. Um, the most interesting thing I learned this week. Oh, yeah. What's the most interesting thing you learned this week? Well, I um, I was looking for interesting things because we had talked about doing this. And yeah. I was there was going to be this thing about, so there was this. This guy that found like an, an ancient city, like mm-hmm. underneath the earth. It was like an inner earth kind of theory. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where he was like, oh, yeah, it's totally like an ancient like elevator that goes down into the earth and mm-hmm. kind of things. And, and where uh, is it? Well, like the, it was in Eastern Europe, I think. I don't know. But it was this long setup on this video. And then they were like, oh, yeah. And we went there and there, there's actually nothing. Mm. But the mystery <laughs> somehow persists. They're like, but if what, what, if, and what yet, you don't know, B 
because and then there was like 45 minutes left of the video. I was Scientists like, where are you going to go from here? Still have questions. They're like, yes, they're like, but what do we really know? They're, well, they went there and there's no there was no cave. There wasn't a, there was no cave. There was none of the things he described. But he had been there in a war time so and it was debunked. he was there in a time of war. So oh, he was well, like, that, yeah, that changes everything. He was escaping other soldiers. Yeah. And um and they were they were taking refuge in this cave. Mm-hmm. And they're like, holy shit, balls. There's an alien civilization down here. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, that sounds really cool. It's kind of so, like the Admiral Byrd stuff. Is that similar? I don't know what that is. You heard about that? That You watched that interview with a 1950s admiral who had the was the last guy to fly over Antarctica in a plane. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he gives an interview in the 50s. like, yes, I flew over Antarctica. And then it got quite tropical. And there was much... Interesting life and civilization. That was in the 50s? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm like, wow, oh, fascinating. He's like, yes, I hope we continue to go there. And then the next year, like, the Treaty of Antarctica was signed. It's like, no one can ever go there again. I think, like, Lovecraft wrote, like, about the yeah, mountains yeah, yeah. of madness in, yeah, like, the yeah, 30s. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But we've seen, we've been over Antarctica. You can see, you can go there. Like, there's not a tropical part, right? Well, of the part, we, yeah. We can only go to, like, you're allowed to visit, like, the very edge. What? You, you can't mean? go deep. Who you can't go deep into Antarctica. Who stops you from going there? The government. The government. The is, alphabet boys. Who is the government of Antarctica? They don't have a government. The, it's all the governments of the world. They split it up like a pizza pie. In the Treaty of Antarctica, even the even like USSR and this America, is a real thing. Like, yeah, which was like weird because it was like signed in like 1949 or like 1950. They're like, all right, let's get around. We don't like each other about this other stuff, but let's just all agree no one's going to Antarctica. Is that <laughs> kind the of how part. they do it now, like with the moon, where they're like, all yeah. right, no one can own the moon, but we're just gonna put our flag right here. That doesn't mean that we own it, okay? It, but this part is technically like we were here first. Look, I just left the flag there. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. It's just a flag. It happens to be our flag. Flag. That doesn't mean that we own it. Uh, yeah. I'm not trying to say that we own space or the moon. But we do. But we do. Copyright. We America. totally own space. If you have more shit in space, you own it, right? That's, That's the law. Rule. That's the law. There's so much shit. Who has the most shit in space? Russia, China, us? America. We have the most shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen? I've seen Elon Musk's uh, Star Train. Yeah. Skylink or whatever it's called. It's, it's a Star Train? Yeah. It looks like a Star Train. Oh. It's probably complete bullshit, <laughs> like everything that guy comes up with. Oh, I'm sure. Probably balloons. But it still looked crazy from, uh, from you know, just ground. You see, like, it just like, it looks like a star, like a real, like. It was really row. balloons? Like stars go, I don't know. It's probably, you know, there's a theory that all satellites are balloons. There's a theory that all satellites are balloons? I don't want to get into it. Okay. No, it's not hit song material. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All satellites are balloons. Yeah, it's possible. It's that possible. could be a hit song material. It just has to have emotion. It has to have the energy. It's just like so less cool that they're just like, I can't say it's balloons. Let's just say it's cool satellite stuff. But they're all disconnected. But I didn't. <laughs> so anyway, I didn't learn anything from this. I didn't learn anything. Okay. From that experience, I what I did learn. We tried. I learned one thing. Okay. That uh, I, like that recycling is fake. Oh yeah. I we didn't know that. We've done that. We've done that. How can like I? That. There was an, there was that like article in the New Yorker or wherever. I was like, eh, it turns out we did an investigation and most of it goes the same place. <laughs> yeah. No, but all plastic is buried. All is totally fake recycling in that, like, but we just do it anyway. Yeah. We still do it even though we all know it's fake. We have to assuage our guilt. Is it just one of those things like we're like we can't even hand like this is fake so we're just gonna keep doing it. Yeah. It's a huge scam. Oh, yeah. They, like, the recycling company is like, oh, we need $20 more million of this recycling. But it's just a garbage company being like, we just. Yeah. We just so do you, do you put recycle plastic? Say, recycle. Uh, I think you, you should. Know, I think, right? yeah, I mean, I mean, you got to try. Try. Because why? Yeah. I mean, who knows? Why not? Yeah. Exactly. Good help. <laughs> I don't want to not. I do, I, I do have to say that it was requested that we have a, a segment on, on the show that's called My Wife Would Like things, Some Things Clarified. Okay. Um, Let's begin. Voting is important. You should vote. And if you want to, science is no science is real. Science is real. Mm-hmm. We believe in science. And um, that's that was it. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. That was just uh, that was that's the, an important. Yeah, some cl- some cl- clarifiers. But before that, what did I learn? Yeah, the thing about recycling. I'm so I guess I'm still going to recycle plastic. Congrats. But like, what? Why? To have fun, it's fun. It's fun to recycle, that's isn't it? That's very cynical, James. 
it's yeah. not cynical. Yeah. If you're having fun. How's fun having fun cynical? I just thought there would be like some other idea that they would come up with for what what to do with, with uh, all the plastic or something. Mm, bury it. Yeah. Uh, they just burn it now. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's chill. <laughs> that should be fine. You should send it to space. I've always could said you? this. I've always could said you this. Could you just throw, trash, in space? throw trash into a rocket ship and send it to the sun? But it just comes right back down because that's gravity. Fire to the sun. Fire at, at the sun. Yeah. That could work. Could it come back down and create some kind of garbage, huge, like, <laughs> scattered garbage <laughs> over the entire planet? That could work. It could, be the, it could be the cosmic equivalent of pissing in the wind. For sure. Yeah. Uh, for sure. So we got to take all our garbage. But it's worth a shot. And shoot it into space. Yeah. And by no means should we make less garbage. No, we can't. No, we can't. Do you know how many things are made of unrecyclable plastic? It's insane. We, I mean, plastic should be the number one thing banned in, in the world. Like there's, a, there's ways to do it. We can just, you know, do it with bamboo. Bamboo grows crazy fast. Hemp grows crazy fast. So you can do it. Like weed. You can, you can make. I cannot personally know, but we as civilization, if we chose to make it a priority, we could definitely do is it. Hemp, is hemp still illegal? Remember when hemp was like an edgy thing to wear in like high school? You'd be like, I'm, these pants are made of hemp. Yeah. And yeah. they'd be like, well, that's technically illegal because it's kind of like weed. Yeah. It made you better at hacky sack too. Yeah. But is it, um, but can you, is the hemp, hemp is just weed, right? Or it's, it's a different, like, the, no, it's not, it is, but it's different, like, strain. It's not the psychoactive strain. It's like indica. It's like the male. Plant, it's basically. the male plant, yeah, but it doesn't get you high, yeah. Crazy. Well, that, would be, that would be the male plant, <laughs> fucking a the dude plant doesn't even yeah. get you high. So, what can it do? What can the dude, the dude plant do? It can make rope, the it can make bread, it does everything, it provides, it works hard, it's not all getting high, okay? It's out working, you know, it's working, yeah, it's making paper, it's making rope, yeah, different. You know, different sides of tape, paper, anything. So anything. that sounds like technically that should be like the female one, right? Like, and they should be reversed, kind of the. the oh, well, we don't like to assign gender roles. Do yeah. We? Well, yeah, we did. We did assign gender roles with plants. Yeah, we have. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We we've did. assigned. We've also assigned them to like, um, like microphone cables. I've noticed. Yep. yep. Male and female. Right. Why did we need to do that? Well, it's a principle of masculine and feminine. It's in the Kabbalion. You could have just said like cone and hole or something. You could, but I mean, people, everyone know what would you're that talking have been about. More, would that, that have, have been, been more, less clear? It would have been less clear and more, and honestly, more sexual that way. They'd be like, this one has three pointy <laughs> things coming out of it. What is this? Oh, that's clearly that's the male because all men have three pointy penises yep. that go into three holes. And that's the female. Mm -hmm. I guess it could be some kind of like alien penis thing. <laughs> Okay. Well, I think we have enough to make a rap song. Yeah. Yeah. That's. But can we make a hit song? Let's go. All right. Let's do it. Get ready. And now, the rap song that we made about the stuff we just talked about. Shut down the loose from bay. 